Welcome. I'm Debbie Little, a licensed practitioner here at the Center for Spiritual Living in Greater Las Vegas. Thank you for joining me today as we move into meditation, into this time of reflection and contemplation. I invite you now to relax in this moment. As the sun rises in the east, a new day dawns, a beginning, a time of stepping out as this beautiful God experience into this adventure, into this life. knowing that God is present every moment, each step that we take, each detour that we take, but we know that the truth is a path and we get right back on, knowing that we are this lighthouse of love, this compassionate vessel filled, filled with peace and grace and beauty, knowing that this life is our choice. As we walk this path, we choose. We choose to love. We choose to support. We choose to move in a peaceful rhythm that guides us into this dance of life. It is a beautiful expression of who we are, not as an individual, but as experience of God. this beautiful expression, going through life, moving through the challenges, accepting and surrendering to those moments when we embrace doubt and fear. But we know that within ourselves is the courage and the confidence and the faith to move forward, to move through this, for we are the center of peace. And as things swirl us around us, we feel within ourselves that peace is where I am. knowing that God is the only power. There is nothing else. That God and I are one. That I am never, ever forsaken. That as I move up and forward, I move into this glorious experience and adventure of life.
I know that I am made uniquely for this time and this experience and this life. That I stand in this parentheses of time, knowing that my life is this deep expression of who I am. that I move in this glorious, graceful dance of life, knowing that the past has no hold over me and the future is not my fulfillment, but right here and right now in this present moment, I am the gift. I am this present moment right here and right now. And I let go and I shed all the doubts, all the fears, and I move with this deepest sense of confidence and love, greeting each individual that I meet with a smile, holding true to who I am, that authentic, integral person of being. I move in authenticity, I move in peace. And I dance to the rhythm from that background music of joy within my soul as it heightens and vibrates to this universal presence, going out, touching individuals that I don't even know. but I know that it is God's pleasure to give me the kingdom. And within myself, as I go in to that secret, beautiful, exquisite place to commune with spirit, I feel the power and the presence and I ask for nothing. I sit in the quietude and I listen. I listen for that voice that directs and guides me and loves me. No matter what mistake I have made, I am always deeply loved. So I know that this path less traveled is a unique one for me, where I have taken many roads, but yet the one road to truth, to beauty, to the feeling of grace within me, it is lighted before me.
no matter what step I take, I am divinely guided at every moment. This is my adventure. This is my experience. And I am joyfully standing in this anticipation because God's idea for me is greater than anything that I could ever imagine for myself. Doors open, doors close. And at each time, I grow and have become more of who I am. And as I walk through that door, I experience the blissful joy of loving each individual on my path, knowing that we are all one, one voice, one deep expression. As I look into your eyes, I see that Christ identity within you, and I bless you because you are this greatest expression also that I meet on this pathway. So right here, right now, I embrace this moment. I awaken to a new day, to a new moment. Each time I get up, I bless the day. I bless my life for another breath that I breathe, for another heartbeat that beats within my chest. I say thank you, thank you for this experience for this opportunity of another day to be me, to be that God experience, to go out into this world, to make a difference. And as I get up, I smile and I walk and I feel that gentle breeze against my skin. And I look at nature and I feel just that glorious sunshine that warming my skin. And I hear the birds singing in tune to the rhythm of life. It is an exquisite expression what life is. So right here and right now, I simply say just thank you in the deepest sense of gratitude for everything in my life, for every challenge, for every doubt, for every fear, for every opportunity, for every success, for every failure. I am blessed because I have grown through everything with the power and the presence of God deep within my soul. And so it is. join Centers for Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas. CSLGOV is known as a teaching center. 
You may wish to experience this service as many of our members do by having pen and paper nearby. You'll be ready to jot down many of the ideas, teachings, and inspirations presented here today. The celebration service begins right after these community messages. Our weekly conversation, Let's Talk, takes place on Zoom right after this celebration service. Today, we'll share a deeper discussion of Reverend Claire's message, The Adventure of a Lifetime. If you're viewing this on YouTube, scroll down and click the Let's Talk link to join in. The Zoom invite can also be found in the recently emailed newsletter or on our Facebook page. Join our community conversation immediately following this celebration service. Subscribe on YouTube and check out our Friday Spiritual Soundscapes as CSL GLB vocalists bring you much of your favorite music every Friday at 7 p.m. There's something new each week. Enjoy performances from CSL GLB vocalists Melissa K. Allen, David Valala, Mackenzie Amar, and Justin Vogel, along with special guest singers. It's music for your soul. Go to YouTube and subscribe today. Licensed practitioner Lynn Frankenberger hosts Adventures in Faith every Tuesday at 11 a.m. on Zoom, and you're invited to join in. This weekly group discussion focuses on Science of Mind magazine's daily guides and how to apply them. Check Facebook and our weekly newsletter for more details. In this joyous time of joining together in truth, the question is not what do we want. The question, rather, is who do we need to be to manifest that which we envision for our lives? This is a time for us to remember together, as Ernest Holmes taught, Life is one perfect wholeness. The flower is already in the seed. Reverend Claire Summerhill continues the spring series for our midweek services, focusing on the creative process. This Wednesday, May 5th, she presents Awake and Arise. Throughout the ages, scholars and sages, mystics and seekers have sought to understand and experience what it means to know God. Join Reverend Claire to understand what's possible when we awaken to our true selves, seeing and knowing ourselves as sparkles of the infinite divine light. Isn't it amazing how a childhood interest can grow into a passion that evolves into a successful professional career? This has enabled Elmarie Farr Walter to travel back and forth on our continent and to several others in sharing the magnificence of spirit as both a professional speaker and as a practitioner. On Mother's Day, May 9th, we will be reminded by Elmarie that the major growth we experience takes place in the womb of creativity before it ever emerges as form into the outer world. Let's nurture our inner self. Prepare yourself for this Mother's Day message by first participating in 15 minutes of meditation with Rev. Richard Walter at 9.45 a.m. The Sunday celebration begins at 10. Affirmative prayer is a powerful and effective spiritual practice. CSL Greater Las Vegas has practitioners to support you spiritually every day. If you would like to reach one of them, visit our website at cslgob.org and click on Prayer Request. Our practitioners are here to remember the truth with you. At CSL Greater Las Vegas, it is our mission to inspire spiritual discovery through community, connection, exploration, and celebration. This mission supports the all-inclusive vision of Centers for Spiritual Living worldwide, in which we envision a world that works for everyone and all of creation. Reverend Claire Summerhill has served CSL GLV as a beloved staff minister since her graduation from ministerial school in 2016. She led our youth and family ministry for five years. Her first book, Walking on Water, outlines the seven steps to accomplishing that which seems impossible. Reverend Clara has been called to live simply and with joy, awakening to her own divine magnificence as she encourages and supports others in knowing and experiencing their oneness with all that is. What if we could see our lives not as an ongoing effort to survive or to prove something or to get ahead, but instead as a freely chosen adventure, an opportunity to see new and exciting things and explore places within ourselves we've never been before, and by doing this, gain a totally new experience of life. Today, Reverend Claire examines the gates leading to a new way of experiencing life that are swinging wide open before us as she presents The Adventure of a Lifetime. Let's begin with licensed spiritual practitioner Debbie Little, as she offers an affirmation followed by the invocation for the celebration service. Welcome. I'm Debbie Little, a licensed practitioner here at the Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas. I am so grateful that you have joined us for our celebration service. Let's take a moment to consider this week's affirmation. You may wish to jot it down or take a picture of it, or just keep it with you as a source of inspiration throughout the week. 
I'll read the affirmation, and then we'll enter into contemplation together, after which I will give the invocation. With unshakable confidence, I participate fully and freely in the adventure of life. With unshakable confidence, I participate fully and freely in the adventure of life. I breathe in, I breathe out, I take in. Take this moment just to breathe in and breathe out. Just relaxing into this moment. Letting everything just fall away into the nothingness where it came. Be present right here and right now. Knowing that spirit is within us. That we come together in celebration of this service together, united as one, each as an individual also creative, an expression of God, uniquely you. I celebrate this moment in time as we awaken to a new day, a new dawn, going forward with this anticipation and excitement of life that each individual brings their special, unique talent to this world. So I know right here and right now that God is right where I am. So in this moment, I just stand in truth, in beauty, in grace, and let this moment unfold perfectly in balance, in beauty. And so together we say, and so it is. Take in I
Today is the day I will change my luck. I will find three pennies and they'll be heads up. I will walk like a queen in my tannies and jeans. Cause I know where I come from. From the stars and the sun, from that magical one, I am part of this thing called life. From the known to unseen, everything in between, I am part of this thing called life. I am one with this thing called life. Today is the day I'll remember to see Only good, only God have been in through you and me I will not forget all the treasures to me Cause I know where I come from From the stars and the sun, from that magical one I am part of this thing called life, yeah From the known to unseen I am part of this thing called life I am one with this thing called life Yeah, today is the day I'll be more of myself Love my skin where I've been and everyone else No more push, no more pull Simply go as I flow Cause I know where I This thing called life, yeah. From the known to unseen, everything in between. I am part of this thing called life. Yeah. From the stars and the sun, from that magical one, I am part of this thing called life. Yeah. From the known to unseen, everything in between. I am part of this thing called life. I am one with this thing called life. I am loved by this thing called life. Welcome. It's always such a pleasure and a joy for me to spend some time with you as we journey along together on this adventure of exploration, discovery, and as we seek to remember who we are and why we're here, it seems to me that so often we have kind of a short memory. And so we come together to remember, to remember what's possible, what we're about, what we're committed to, and it seems to me there are two things that we have a tendency to forget. And the one is how reality works. And when we forget that, we start thinking that reality doesn't really apply to us, that that applies to other people. And we forget reality, the reality of a generous, ever-giving universe, a universe that can't be stopped from pouring out blessings on us. And the other thing we forget is that we are beings with creative power, that we have the power to create that which we invent first in our thought and then allow to come into being. So one of the reasons I love sharing with you is that I've discovered that as I open myself to what spirit wants to say, I sometimes think of it as myself as a flute, opening myself for that divine breath to blow through me and create that music that will inspire you. And of course, the flute doesn't choose what song to play next. The flute simply opens itself and is ready. And as I consciously do that, what so often happens Spirit speaks to me exactly what I need to hear. And so always what I'm telling you is what I myself need to hear. And if you ever feel like I'm repeating myself, just remember, I'm kind of a slow learner sometimes. I need to hear it over and over again. So let's take a minute to 
look at our themes. Our themes are our overarching ideas that sort of shape what we talk about when we come together. So our theme for the year 2021 is timeless wisdom, evolutionary vision. We're spending the year looking at that idea, that idea of looking to the past, to the sages and mystics, those in the past who taught and shared their stories, all that they have to give us, and at the same time to look into the future, what we're evolving into, what we're opening up to. And this, as everything we look at, has an inner level and an outer level. So on the outer, we can look back in history and look forward to what's unfolding. And on the inner level, we can look at our past, the experience we've, we've had, what we've learned from them, how we've grown from them, and acknowledge those and be grateful for them. And at the same time, look ahead to a wide open future. Now, Ernest Holmes liked to say, the past is not precedent. And what that means is that the future is not determined by the past. Now, so often we think that, well, this has always happened to me. This is what happens to me. I need to learn from my mistakes. I don't, I don't want to make that same mistake again. And we do that, and we expect the past to be the same as the future and the future to follow from the past. So as we look at this theme and remember that we're right here in that holy moment of now where the past and the future connect, we remember that. The past doesn't control the future. And it's such an exciting place to be, this place on the cusp so that's our theme for the year. We're exploring it in different ways, always with that in mind. Welcome, acknowledge, be grateful for the past, look forward with joy and expectation to a future. Now, today's the first Sunday in May, so I get to introduce our theme for the month of May. And our theme for May is Holy holy uprising. Wow, what's that? So first, the word uprising. It has within it this sense of rising up. You know, our community song, Together We Rise. And we have those beautiful pictures of the hot air balloons going up as, as we sing that and remember that. So we're, we're raising our consciousness, we're expanding our consciousness to be able to see more, accept more, recognize more and more of the truth. So that's one sent, sense of an uprising, a rising up, an acceptance of our bigger selves. Now, some of you know that Centers for Spiritual Living has a global vision. Now this is our vision of what's possible in the world. And as we look at this and review it, we're actually reminding ourselves, this is what I know is possible. And this is what I'm committed to doing my part to bring about. Now, one of those statements in the global vision says, we see a world in which each and every person lives in alignment with his or her highest spiritual principle, emphasizing unity with God and connection with each other, a world in which individually and collectively we are called to a higher state of consciousness and action. So when we talk about uprising, that's the first sense of it, that rising up. But of course, uprising has another meaning too. Often when we hear that uprising, we think of a rebellion, a revolt, a revolution, a, a change to the status quo, a drastic change. When we think of our American history and the people who had the vision of a different kind of country, a different kind of way of living, of freedom, an ability to create what people wanted. 
And it took a revolution. It took an uprising for that to occur, for something brand new to emerge. So there's those two senses of uprising. Now, the next part, what do we mean when we say a holy uprising? So a holy uprising is one that has a sacred purpose. It's not about revolution for revolution's sake or to gain power or to gain control, but where the uprising has a sacred purpose. You think of what Jesus did. So he brought an uprising. He encouraged the people to rise up. He said, the past is gone now. That vengeful, judgmental God of the Old Testament, that angry God, that's gone now. Now we're in a new space of love. And of course, as many revolutionaries do, he paid with his life for his efforts to overturn the status quo, a holy uprising. And of course, we can think of many examples. The abolitionists who risk their lives to help the enslaved people along the Underground Railway to find freedom in Canada. The people who marched and sang and demonstrated for freedom, for civil rights, for everyone to receive the same kind of treatment and experience. That was a holy uprising, an uprising for a sacred purpose. Recently, I learned of a woman named Taslima Nasrin. Now, Taslima was uh, from Bangladesh. She's an author and uh, a physician. She published a book in 1993 called Lija, which explored the religious tension in her country, the, the extremism, the conflicts between the Hindus and the Muslims. She also wrote about her personal experience with sexual abuse and subjugation of women. Well, as a result of her writing and her work, she was banished, unable to ever come back to her home country. And even in exile, she continues to write and to share her thoughts it's an example of a holy uprising. And here's what she said about that. Come what may, I will continue my fight for equality and justice without any compromise until my death. Come what may, I will never be silenced. There's another example I love. This happened during the 1968 Olympics, the Summer Olympics um, in Mexico City. Uh, two black men on the American team um, won gold and bronze in the 200 meter race. This was Tommy Smith and John Carlos. Now, these two men were very aware of the injustices in our country at the time, the way that black people and other people of color were treated. They were aware of the extreme poverty of many people of color, the opportunities that were denied to them, the systemic racism. And so they decided to take a stand. And as they went up to the podium to receive their Olympic medals, first of all, they went barefoot as a symbol of the poverty that so many black people lived in at that time. And then as the national anthem began to play, they raised their hands in black gloves in a salute. This was their way to say, what's going on needs to be changed. And we are not going to stand here and be proud to be Americans when the, these things are going on in our country. Now, the Olympic Committee was not happy with this. They felt it was politicizing the Olympics. They felt it was wrong. And they came to the, 
the team, the United States team, and they said, you need to kick them off the team. You need to expel them for what they did. And first, the United States team said, no, we're not going to. We're not going to do that. And then the Olympic Committee said, if you don't, we are not going to allow any of the United States team to, to be in the rest of this Olympics to compete. And so under that pressure, the United States kicked them off the team and they were not allowed to compete after that. Now, Tommy Smith, who had taken the gold medal, said, if I win, I'm American, not a black American. But if I did something bad, then they would say I am a Negro. We are black and we are proud of being black. Black America will understand what we did tonight. That was a holy uprising. That was a rising up, a rebellion, a revolt, without fear of the consequences and a willingness to accept the consequences. And they were severe in this case. So that's, those are examples of what we mean when we say a holy uprising. Now, what about a holy, holy uprising? That means it's only holy, totally and completely holy. We don't have any mixed agenda in it. You know, sometimes we may think, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to stand up for what I believe. And we have, we're willing to engage in an uprising, and there may be a holy aspect of it, but there's lots of personal stuff in it too. Like, I'm going to be famous. People are going to admire me. People are going to think I'm great. Can you see how then it's not a holy, holy uprising? Because there's those little taints in it of my doing it for my personal glory. So a holy, holy uprising. As we think of that, I like to imagine for a minute that we're on a trek, maybe a trek of weeks or months, even a lifetime maybe, because we all are, aren't we? And on our travels, on this trek, we come to a plateau and we turn around resting for a minute and we look back at where we've come. See the valleys, forests beneath us, off in the distance. Perhaps we see the villages, the cities that we've been to. And then we turn around and we look ahead. We see mountain ranges. And we know there's much ahead that we don't know, that we can't see. But we're willing. We're willing to move ahead, to move into that, to take on those challenges so we're all there right now in our own journeys. And what if we could say, I'm ready. I'm ready for a holy, holy uprising. I'm in the process of raising my consciousness. I am ready to do what I believe in, to take a stand for what I know is right. And I'm willing to face the consequences. Now, when we do that, and we're willing to do that, that's when our life becomes an adventure. I call it the adventure of a lifetime. So many of us are kind of surviving our lives, trying to get by, trying to make do, trying not to upset people. What if instead we took on our lives this holy, holy uprising as an adventure. Now, that word adventure originally just meant something that was about to happen. So it was anything that was ahead of us. But gradually, over time, it added the meaning of a remarkable occurrence. And then after that, it took on this additional meaning of risk or danger. So for something to be an adventure, it has to have a sense of risk. Now, it's interesting because we know that there are, we're not ever really at risk of anything. We are protected, we're taken care of, and if it feels like we've lost something or we're losing something, 
or there's a risk, that's an illusion. But that's what makes something an adventure when there is that idea of risk. Think of, of Tommy Smith and John Carlos and Tesla Raslin. Was there a risk in what they did? Absolutely. That's what made it a great adventure. Now, you may remember what Helen Keller said. This is a, a famous quote. Security, she said, security means the lack of any risk, is mostly a superstition. Avoiding danger is no safer in the long run than outright exposure. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing. Encouraging us to go on the adventure of a lifetime. Don't stay stuck trying to find a place that's safe. As I was thinking about this, I had this image come to me of myself as a dog, a golden retriever, say, a beautiful golden retriever. And I had a lovely dog crate, maybe as big as a bedroom. I had a soft dog bed in there. I had toys in there. Food and water was always available. And I was perfectly happy. What more could I want? I had everything I needed. And then one day, I noticed that the, the gate to the crate was actually open. It had always been open. And I wandered out and discovered a completely new world. Just think of a dog, you know, being so excited all the smells and things to chase and water to get in and mud to roll in. Well, see, a lot of us are like that. We're just so safe in our secure little environment. And there's nothing wrong with that, but we're missing out on the adventure of what's possible, the unknown, the risk. So what makes something an adventure? So first of all, it's chosen willingly. You know, I, you choose. I want to have an adventure. And you have the choice. You can stay in your small, safe place, or you can go out and be on an adventure, experience things you don't have any idea of what's going to come. The second one is the sense of risk. You know, people who engage in a holy uprising, accept the risk. I might be arrested. I might be hurt. I might be tear gas. I don't know what's going to happen. But that's what makes it an adventure. That's part of what makes it an adventure. Not knowing what's going to happen. Being willing to take the risk. I mean, in a smaller way. Even allowing yourself to open your heart to someone perhaps after you've had your heart broken many times or you've convinced yourself you're no good at relationships and that doesn't work for you, that's an adventure. Say, what if I approach it as an adventure? I don't know what's going to happen. There are risks, but I'm choosing that. So, during Ernest Holmes' life, he had a, a radio show that he called self-reliance, and your adventure. And in it, he said, God is our adventure. He invited us to see our acceptance, our knowing, our opening ourselves to that infinite creative spirit as the greatest adventure. The spiritual adventure, he said, is always unfolding. So, Here's what I want you to remember today. Say to yourself, I'm ready for a holy, holy uprising. As a center, let's say to ourselves, we're ready for a holy, holy uprising. We're ready for an adventure. We don't know how it's going to look. We don't need to. We're willing to take risks. We're willing to stand up and say, this is how it's going to be. That's the first part. And we're willing to accept each other's support. 
as we take off on this adventure. Next, welcome life as an ongoing adventure. Choose the risk. Choose the unknown. Accept what happens. A part of this, of course, is letting go of any sense of blame. If things happen that are unexpected and that are challenging to us, of course, when we're in that place where we remember that everything that happens is a gift to us from the universe, then we don't blame ourselves. Instead of saying, oh boy, I screwed that one up. I should never have done that. I should have, I should have remembered. Why didn't I stay in the safe little crate instead of going out exploring in the big world? Now look. Now we let that go as part of the adventure, and then we look. Where's the gift? The universe is always creatively and intelligently unfolding, evolving. What's ours to do is to align ourselves with that, participate in that, be a part of that. So, as you go forward into this next week, say yes. Say yes to the adventure of a lifetime. Say, I'm ready, I'm willing. I see my life as an adventure. And you might say this affirmation to yourself. With unshakable confidence, I participate fully and freely in the adventure of life. We take a breath and we remember We remember what we know. We know that we live in an atmosphere of love. We know that we live in an infinite creative energy that is in all and through all. We know that we are expressions of the divine, unique, irreplaceable, ourselves alone. And we know we are growing, we are evolving, we are expanding. I know this is true for me, and because we are one, I know that what is true for me is true for all of us. This is who we are. And knowing this and remembering this, I declare Our center is ready to engage on the adventure of a lifetime. We may not know how it will look. We may not know how it will turn out. There may be risks, because there are always risks when we're willing to accept the unknown. But we are willing because we know it's all an adventure. We accept our power to create our lives as the adventure of a lifetime. We give thanks. We give thanks for the opportunity to be together, to come together, to worship, to pray, to meditate, to support each other, to love each other, to know the truth for each other when we forget. We live in a space of gratitude, knowing and seeing and accepting the gifts that continue to continue to come. And knowing this, accepting it, affirming it, we say together, and so it is. Thank you, Reverend Claire, for your heartfelt prayer and message. Prayer and meditation are two very powerful spiritual traditions here in our community. 
know that licensed spiritual practitioners are deeply committed to supporting you through prayer. We are here for you. Please feel free to call on us. As a matter of fact, even as I speak, two practitioners are providing spiritual support right now for you, for me, and for our entire community. They're holding us deep in spiritual loving care from their homes by sitting in meditation during the service. We thank Justin Vogel and Bobby Williams for holding high watch for each one of us today. We now have the opportunity to share our good. I invite you to take a moment to reflect on all of the blessings in your life. Allow yourself to feel the gratitude for those blessings. Center for Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas is grateful to bless our community by offering spiritual education, opportunities for connection, support through prayer, and our Sunday and Wednesday online services. We welcome your conscious giving in the spirit of gratitude and infinite possibility. There's a new way to easily support our beloved center. You can now make a donation via text to give. Text the word GIVE to 702-728-4525 and follow the prompts to set up this convenient option. You can also scroll down during the service to take the contribution link to make a one-time or recurring donation. Or if you prefer, you can send a check payable to CSL GLV. Thank you. We appreciate your generosity. And now, while you're sending your gift, let's listen again to Melissa K. Allen. Everything. When life gets you down, just say 
set your soul at ease You are not alone You're a part of You're a part of everything You're a part of You're a part of everything Thank you, Melissa. You always inspire and uplift us with your talent. And thank you for your generous gift and support of our center. We remain committed to serving you. Center for Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas continues to provide enriching services, transformative classes, and powerful opportunities for connection within our community. Be sure to watch the announcements at the end of today's service for what's coming up in the weeks ahead. And now, here is a member of our Covenant Creation Team to introduce our Sacred Covenant Prayer. This will be followed by our closing song and a benediction. Good morning, CSL GLV. I'm Reverend Colleen Tanaka, and I'm so happy to be with you today. And it was my great privilege to represent you on the Covenant Creation Team. It's been so inspiring to me to see how we have been spirit-led through this entire process. And we have the opportunity to continue to trust in the mystery and the mysticism of the process. Let's continue to stand together in deep faith, in the realization of oneness, open to the revelation of our new minister. By reading the Sacred Covenant daily, each of us releases our limiting beliefs in the light of a higher idea. This advanced spiritual practice asks that each one of us become that which we wish to experience in our new minister, that we become it ourselves, and then we make way for spirit to bring it to us. Remember, we demonstrate what we embody in our own consciousness. We demonstrate what we embody in our own consciousness. I invite you to open your heart right now and let's read our sacred covenant prayer together. There is only one life. This life is good. This life is God. This life is my life now. In knowing that I am one with this life that is God, I therefore know that I am one with all of its blessed expressions which includes the presence of a new minister for my beloved spiritual community. Because I know that the highest purpose of my new minister is to glorify God, I therefore know that my new minister is a revelation of God as wholeness. I further know that my new minister is the fulfillment of that which has been promised by God, for it is written, Infinite wholeness is perfect peace within us. Our thought is inspired, guided, governed, and directed by divine wisdom. As I stand in agreement with my beloved community, I see my new minister revealed before me as a loving, compassionate, inspired leader. I now intend to experience my new minister in full cooperation and agreement with my community, knowing this truth about myself, for... I am awakening the divine being that I am. I am inspiring a deeper realization of God. I am a healing presence, knowing and revealing truth. I am fanning the flame of the inner mystic. I am fostering programs that grow and support the membership and community at large. I am touching the soul of the community through artistic creativity. As I now accept the highest expression of a new minister into my life, I know that they will be revealed in a way that will glorify God and serve the highest and greatest good of all who are touched by their presence. I am grateful God is gracious. Amen. Feel it now.
a while. Let's do it. I release and I let go. I let the spirit of my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only in the light. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free. The adventure of a lifetime. Why not? It's your choice. Here's what Ernest Holmes said. In the midst of plenty, humanity lives in want because of fear. To overcome fear is the greatest adventure of the mind of man. Thank you for joining us. Go forth in peace. Go forth in joy. Go forth on this adventure, the adventure of a lifetime. Namaste. Our weekly conversation, Let's Talk, takes place on Zoom right after this celebration service. Today, we'll share a deeper discussion of Reverend Claire's message, The Adventure of a Lifetime. If you're viewing this on YouTube, scroll down and click the Let's Talk link to join in. The Zoom invite can also be found in the recently emailed newsletter or on our Facebook page. Join our community conversation immediately following this celebration service. Subscribe on YouTube and check out our Friday Spiritual Soundscapes as CSL GLB vocalists bring you much of your favorite music every Friday at 7 p.m. There's something new each week. Enjoy performances from CSL GLB vocalists Melissa K. Allen, David Balala, Mackenzie Amar, and Justin Bogle, along with special guest singers. It's music for your soul. Go to YouTube and subscribe today. Licensed practitioner Lynn Frankenberger hosts Adventures in Faith every Tuesday at 11 a.m. on Zoom, and you're invited to join in. This weekly group discussion focuses on Science of Mind magazine's daily guides and how to apply them. Check Facebook and our weekly newsletter for more details. In this joyous time of joining together in truth, the question is not what do we want. The question, rather, is who do we need to be to manifest that which we envision for our lives? This is a time for us to remember together, as Ernest Holmes taught, life is one perfect wholeness. The flower is already in the seed. Reverend Claire Summerhill continues the spring series for our midweek services, focusing on the creative process. This Wednesday, May 5th, she presents Awake and Arise. Throughout the ages, scholars and sages, mystics and seekers have sought to understand and experience what it means to know God. Join Reverend Claire to understand what's possible when we awaken to our true selves, seeing and knowing ourselves as sparkles of the infinite divine light. Isn't it amazing how a childhood interest can grow into a passion that evolves into a successful professional career? This has enabled Elmarie Far Walter to travel back and forth on our continent, and to several others, in sharing the magnificence of spirit as both a professional speaker and as a practitioner. On Mother's Day, May 9th, we will be reminded by Elmarie that the major growth we experience takes place in the womb of creativity before it ever emerges as form into the outer world. Let's nurture our inner self. Prepare yourself for this Mother's Day message by first participating in 15 minutes of meditation with Rev. Richard Walter at 9.45 a.m. The Sunday celebration begins at 10. Affirmative prayer is a powerful and effective spiritual practice. CSL Greater Las Vegas has practitioners to support you spiritually every day. If you would like to reach one of them, visit our website at cslgov.org and click on Prayer Request. Our practitioners are here to remember the truth with you. 